Hey everybody, welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Christy Brower, here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey Katie. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it's going. I've got a little teeny cold going on, so if I sound Uh-oh. a little, you know, porn star raspy, that's why. That's <laughs> if I ever get even the littlest of cold, my voice just goes, die mm-hmm. <laughs> So. I probably sound a lot worse than I feel, so no worries at all. But yeah, I'm a little gravelly. Well, that's okay. Yeah. We'd rather you be gravelly than not here at all. True. However, something very exciting is happening at my house. Yes. So all I asked for for Mother's Day was help with a murder. I know you guys won't be surprised <laughs> considering what I'm constantly talking about. But this I is mean, different... we're putting this out on the out on the air. Are you sure you want to say this? <laughs> So it's a little different murder than we're used to around here. I have had this pack of crows hanging around my property for the last year. Last winter, I befriended a magpie that would come and get pieces of dog food from me in the winter. And somehow from that, I ended up with magpies in the backyard and crows in the front yard. And they'd have a turf war over the house every morning around six or seven. (laughs) So my husband appreciated that a lot. Um, I bet. Listening to that screeching fight. But anyway, I didn't mind it. I kind of liked it a lot. But anyway, I think the crows won because the magpies are gone. I haven't seen any of them for a year. And now I just have crows. But I realized if I'm going to have a murder of crows living in my yard and in all my trees, how am I not their friend? So right. befriend the crows, form the crow murder uh, is in action. So we moved, so I've cool. done tons of research. So today we moved this big, heavy uh, cement bird bath thing out into the front yard where I wanted it uh, because they have to eat, they need something really sturdy to be able to eat in that's not swinging around or, you know, a flimsy mm. bird house because they're big birds. And then I put several things in it that they're supposed to like or hopefully like to eat. And I put, uh, some yard decor around it that's flashy and shiny because they like that too. And my daughter ordered me for Mother's Day a crow call. I didn't take a video of this because I was in my nightgown, well, pajamas, in the I front really yard. I <laughs> wanted to see video of this. <laughs> but I'll get video. So I we set it all up. I put the food. I stood next to it. I called and called with the crow call, standing out in the front yard in my pajamas. I thought, my God, my neighbors. They already think we're the crazy people at the end of the street. Now this, now wait until there's like a hunt, you know, I don't know. I'm going to say a hundred. That's too many crows. (laughs) Like a lot too many. Living in my trees all the time. Yeah. I'm good with it. So yeah, I don't know about the crow call. I did my best. Um, Scott said some of them sounded crowish. A lot of them didn't. Micah said it mostly sounded like I was trying to uh, sound like a rooster. I don't Mm -hmm. know. But I did see one crow this afternoon pecking around in the yard. He didn't actually get in the feeder, but he was all the way around it. So Mm -hmm. checking it out. Yeah. So anyway, Queen of Crows operation is in full swing. And I will certainly keep you all posted. Yeah. Uh, I am excited. So the murder is happening. It's on. The murder is on. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So how well, are I'm you? jealous. I've seriously considered doing the same thing. So I'm going to see how this goes for you. And then I'll see? learn from you. Find yeah. out if that row call is worth it or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really good. I'm just, I'm excited about this show. So this is mm-hmm. the cold read for Katie. And this is a story of two girls named Molly and Holly. So I'm okay. going to tell you some stories. And uh, then I'm going to have some questions for you. Okay. First, this is Molly. Molly was born on August 7th, 2nd of 1983. She lived in rural Massachusetts. And at the time of her disappearance and later death, she was a lifeguard in her hometown, which was Warren, Massachusetts. Okay. So in the summer of 2000, she was 16 and she was working at as a lifeguard at Commons Pond, 
So this was just a pond where people swam and it was all kind of set up to be, you know, had lifeguards and all the stuff that you would have at a place like that. Sure. And so her mother would drive her to work every day. And so on June 27th, her mom, Maggie, drove her to Commons Pond and dropped her off near her lifeguard station, just like usual. You know, nothing seemed strange or out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. um, a, little on, a little later on that day, it was discovered that there was no one on duty at Commons Pond. Oh. Molly was gone. All of her belongings were still there at her station, mm -hmm. and she just vanished. Ooh, okay. Yeah, okay. So then we have Holly. Holly was born on January 19th, 1983. She was from Grafton, Massachusetts. And um, at the time of her disappearance, she was visiting her grandparents in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. On the day of her disappearance, she and her brother went to a neighbor's house to see some puppies. Her brother came back to where her parents or grandparents were living. And uh, Holly never did. She just disappeared into thin wow. air. One of her shoes was found by the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Two months after Holly's disappearance, her body was found by hunters in the woods in Brimfield, Massachusetts. Okay. Her death is unsolved. Molly, uh, Molly's body was also found in the woods on June 9th of 2003. Uh, cause of death unknown, undetermined, but they did believe that she was murdered. Her death is also unsolved. Now for the weird part. Now remember that Holly disappeared and died in 1993, right? Yeah. She was born in 1983, died in 1993. She was 10 at the time she died. Okay, so... Molly was also born in 1983. Yeah. And she died in 2000, which would have made her 16 at the time yeah. of her death. She would have also been 10 at the time of Holly's death. Right. So at the time of Holly's death, Molly was really affected by it when she saw it in the news. And here was this girl that was the same age as her. And she wrote a card and sent it to Holly's parents. And it said, I'm very sorry. I wish I could make it up to you. Holly is a very pretty girl. She is almost as tall as me. I wish I knew Holly. I hope they find her. Wow. Yeah. Weird enough for you yet? I'm guessing it's going to get weirder. Well, kind of. Okay. So both cases are unsolved, right? Both cases happened in Massachusetts. Both girls just disappeared out of thin air. Both bodies found in the woods. Okay. So um, a couple of different, well, okay, let's do this first. I want to ask you a question. Do you think that Holly and Molly, I put, need to put, uh, Holly's picture up here too because I haven't put it up yet. Do you think that Holly and Molly were killed by the same man? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yes, I do. Okay. So here are a couple of options. In 2009, a man named Rodney Stanger was uh, looked at for uh, killing both Holly and Molly. He murdered his girlfriend and he lived in that same area, Southbridge, Massachusetts. Okay. And the police um, did look for him. Now, in Molly's death, there had been a few days before her disappearance, 
there was a man in a white car hanging around the pond where she worked that her mother thought seemed kind of sketchy. She remembered seeing him. She hadn't really thought anything about it. But, um, you know, later she thought, you know, I didn't feel good about that guy. He drove a white car and he had a mustache. Mm -hmm. So Stanger also had a white car and a mustache. And um, they thought maybe he was the person that uh, Maggie saw the day, a couple of days before Molly's disappearance. He also fished in Commons Pond and hunted in the woods where Molly's body was found. So there were some questions. He was investigated for Molly's murder and Holly's murder because of the proximity and the similarities in their disappearances. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they tried to have, you know, to link him to these cases forensically. But, you know, these cases were in the 90s and the in early 2000s, and they just didn't have much yeah. in the way of forensics. They did try to connect him, but they really didn't have any opportunity to. Um, and he never was charged. Mm-hmm. In the case. So then there was another guy, David, David Porleo, who they suspected of both murders as well. Unfortunately, he died in 2003 before they could ever really make any progress. Mm-hmm. So two men that were both investigated for molly and holly's kidnappings and murders but these cases are unsolved they're very famous uh, molly bish especially Mm -hmm. but then holly's kind of became more famous after the fact because of the connection of the two of them their their names Mm -hmm. the fact that molly wrote a letter uh it's holly perenan is is holly's last name um But, you know, just it's a strange connection, strange connection. And when you look at them side by side, mm-hmm. uh, they're blonde with dark yeah. eyes. Like they look a fair amount alike. We're looking at the yeah. picture, pictures of them side by side uh, here on uh, YouTube right now, if you're watching the video. And uh, they, they do have a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. And the police seem to do really do believe that these two cases are connected. Mm-hmm. But. Unfortunately, they've really never been able to get anybody really connected to either case enough to charge anyone. So I'm curious, do you feel like they're on the right track with either Rodney Stanger or, um, what's the other guy's name? Sorry, David uh, Porleo. I believe that it was David. I think that David actually killed four girls. Okay. Uh, these are the two that they're looking at him for right now. But he, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, in another state, he had also, he, he, he'd done this a, a total of four times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He was a serial killer, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe low level, didn't kill like, you know, 50 women like some of them. But I right. do feel like he had some really serious uh, sexual fetish kind of things happening. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know if fetish is the right word, but I do feel like he abducted these girls. I feel like he had a type. Obviously, these two both fit it. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, like I said, I feel like he did it two other times in another state where they just have never been linked together. Mm-hmm. Um, always blonde. Always blonde with dark mm-hmm. eyes. Or, I feel like that emulates someone in his life, maybe his mother. Mm, okay the look Mm -hmm. um but i do feel like in in all cases he sexually assaulted these women or these children and killed them um he convinced the lifeguard that he was having a health emergency in his car okay okay 
And that's how he got her in, or that someone money. was having a health emergency in his car. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's how he tricked her into his car. Uh, the other, the little one was just a snatch and grab. He mm -hmm. literally like rolled up and grabbed her. And yeah. Drove away. Um, other cases I believe were similar. I wish that they had, and maybe they do have an idea of other cases that he might be associated with. But You know, I did some research on him and I couldn't find anything really beyond that he is has been a suspect in these two cases. Mm -hmm. There really wasn't much of anything else, but, you know, he died. Yeah. And so I feel like they just may not have had enough time yeah. to connect things to him before he passed away. Mm -hmm. Well, and it could be the other ones. They've connected them to someone else. You know, yeah, to another serial killer or whatnot. But and thank God he died because I think he would have just kept doing this. Yeah, stopped him. That's mm -hmm. for sure. The similarities, some of them really are just similarities. You know, the letter that's so wild, but it it didn't. It's not the thing that connected them. You know, no, it just no. But somehow be. Molly felt a connection to Holly. Yeah. And then later was murdered by the same person. It's yeah, just very strange. Wild. Yep, it yeah. is. And their names, Molly and Holly, their yeah. physical appearance. But yes, the, the circumstances of their disappearances and the way that their bodies were found, mm -hmm. you know, where their bodies were found, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was a connection on some level. Mm -hmm. Yep. Both of them, by the way, were suffocated or strangled. Okay. And, lines. you know, that makes sense because they weren't really able to determine cause of death on Molly mm -hmm. because, you know, she was bones by the time they found her. Sure. And, you know, they, they really didn't, I couldn't find where they said exactly what they thought uh, had killed Holly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Very sad. Yeah, quite a case. And these two cases, you know, continue to remain unsolved, which yeah. is sad because now the perpetrator is dead. Yeah. And they may never yeah. connect um, connect the two of them. There wasn't, it appeared that there wasn't much forensic work done on either one of these cases initially. Yeah. And without that, it's pretty impossible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, and not a lot to do. No, no, not a lot to do, unfortunately. Yeah. The big focus in both cases was to find the girl, you know, which, of course, sure. is a kidnapping case. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. But unfortunately, sometimes, especially in the past, not so much now in a kidnapping case, then because the focus is on finding the person that the, the forensic work doesn't always get done that needs yeah. to get done. Yeah. Without for, a doubt. You know, for further use, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, that is the story of Molly Bish and Holly Perenan. Well, lots of love to their families. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope, you know, uh, Molly's family particularly has gone on to do all kinds of work, missing children, um, charities, and lots of things to, you know, offer support to families that are going through the things that they have been through. And it's interesting that a lot of people do that after they lose a child this way. Yeah. Yep. Well, they're the mm. ones that get legislation pushed forward. They're the ones that, uh, yep. yep. Get, uh, yeah. all kinds of databases and yeah, just forward motion for yep. sure. And they, they just didn't want anybody to forget her name. Definitely. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that. That was interesting. Yeah. I knew it was a little bit different style than what we normally do, but I yeah. thought it was kind of interesting because these cases are so, so very linked. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our second case of the week. And today is Tuesday. So we have another case coming on Wednesday. And of course, our update at 7 p.m. Mountain, uh, which is our live update on YouTube with our yeah. uh, case updates. Got some interesting stuff to share. Yes. And uh, then Thursday is the Psychic Hour, also at 7 p.m. Mountain. And that is also a live stream on YouTube. So 
And then watch for some pop-ups over the weekend because we like to yeah. just show up and tell you something because that's Ooh. pretty fun. I have a humdinger of a pop-up for you. Yeah. Do you? Oh, I'm mm -hmm. excited. <clears throat> yeah, right. I've been way down the rabbit hole today. Ooh, very interesting. Yeah. Well, you guys know it. We are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Thanks for being here. Thanks, guys.